Last week, I had a friend reach out to me by text. He's a, he's a nurse at a hospital. And he said one of my videos had really helped him uh, to be able to work through some of the stresses and challenges of, of being a nurse now. And he talked to me about how nurses and, and all these emergency medical care service providers aren't, aren't getting the mental health care that they need and they're, they're really stressed. And I asked him if I could make some videos to help them out. And he said, that'd be great. And I asked him, what are some of the things that, that you, you all could use? And he gave me lots of ideas and I'm gonna create a series of videos to be able to share some information that could be really helpful. So one of the big questions that he asked me was, with all the stress and trauma we're experiencing right now, how do we move from the, the purging uh, our emotions through blow-ups or whatever, or, or breaking down to properly maintaining good mental health hygiene? And so let's start with that. First of all, what is, what is mental health hygiene in the first place? It's easy to, to be able to recognize our physical health and attend to our physical health because it's really on the surface. Others can see it, and so it's easier to talk about and to, to get compassion from. But mental health is maybe a little bit harder because it's internal. But there are things that we can do on a regular basis to take care of that. When we don't take care of our physical hygiene, it becomes pretty obvious. And uh, as many nurses and doctors might know and understand, when someone doesn't consistently take care of their mental or their, their physical health hygiene, things like showering, uh, brushing your teeth, or, or things like that, uh, it becomes actually more of a problem to your physical health. If you didn't brush your teeth for weeks on end, you're going to get cavities, and those cavities are going to create problems, and they're going to hurt, and it's going to create other problems. The same is true for our mental health. If we don't attend to our mental health hygiene on a regular basis, it will have an effect on us. It will create more problems. And so as we jump into this, let's remember that you need to learn to make yourself your number one priority. And for nurses, that's really hard to do because you've gotten into this habit of sacrificing and putting others first, which is a great and glorious thing, right? This is, this is very honorable. But the problem is, is it actually limits your ability to care for others when you don't take care of yourself. You think about when you get on an airplane and, and the stewardesses are, are giving the uh, emergency procedure kind of stuff. And when they talk about um, when oxygen masks will drop from the ceiling if there's ever an emergency or cabin pressure destabilization, they say, put your own oxygen mask on first and then put help others. And why? Why is it? Well, it's because if you don't provide yourself with the oxygen, you won't be able to help others. You might pass out. So take care of yourself first. And that's not a bad thing. In putting yourself as a priority and taking care of your own mental health needs, what you're doing is actually increasing your capacity to be able to help others, which is what you're wanting to be doing in the first place. It's what makes you so great. So let's talk about different principles of regular self-care with mental health. Some of these will be more challenging than others because of maybe your uh, stressful schedule or, or whatever it might be. But keep in mind that all of these will be important as you, as you progress in taking care of your mental health. The first one, sleep. It is remarkable how much sleep will be important to your mental health. A tired brain doesn't work as well. That's hard 
when you're working an 18 hour shift and then going home and sleeping for six hours or going somewhere and sleeping for six hours and then checking back in. And I know that's happening and I know that that's hard, but you have to prioritize sleep. A tired brain is not an effective brain. The second one is exercise. There's another thing about exercise that actually increases your capacity to be able to function. And so it actually increases your mental alertness and your energy. So take time to exercise, even if that's just going for a walk for 10 minutes, taking one of your breaks to, to walk and move and exercise, that will be important and it will make a big difference. Another one is nutrition. Take care of what you eat and put into your body. What you eat and put into your body will affect how your brain is working and how the energy you have uh, comes out. So we know that people bring you treats because they're so grateful for all the great work that you do. A lot of times those treats are things like candy, sugar, uh, drinks, whatever it might be. But those things actually limit your brain's capacity. If you can take the time to eat healthy foods, bring healthy foods, whatever it might be, you will increase your ability to think you will feel better in your body and emotionally it will, it will make a big difference. Another one, emotional expression. For some reason in our culture, it is a taboo to talk about your emotions. And I can't think of something that's more toxic to your mental health. It's a blockage. If we're not talking about what's going on, it builds. It builds up until it blows up. So take the time, break the culture. There's an unhealthy culture around, you've gotta to be tough. You've gotta to show that you can handle this. You can't feel emotions. You just gotta be, you know, stoic through this. And that, that actually makes you less capable. Talk about your emotions. If you're overwhelmed, express it. It's okay. Being overwhelmed doesn't make you weak. It makes you human. In this process, recognize that you might get judged. There is, there's an unhealthy culture there. You might have people talk negatively about you. But instead of listening to those words as a negative, take the time to recognize others' judgments as their own unhealthy filter being projected on you doesn't mean that's who you are. That's their unhealthy uh, mental health. Don't let that be spilled out on you. Don't accept that filter. The next one is self-compassion. Take the time to have compassion for yourself. It's okay to feel bad. It's okay to not be everything for everyone. You don't have to make everything better. It's not all on you. If you make mistakes, Forgive yourself. That will be a big difference. It's so easy to get critical and think we have to be perfect. We have to do everything right. We have to support everybody. But that's just not true. That won't help you. And the last, well, the next one is foster a positive perspective. Take the time to see the good. It's all around you, and it always will be. Just like the negative will also always be there. But when we focus on the positive, we see more of it and we create more of it. At the end of every shift, make a note. Find three things that you're grateful for. Think about those. Reflect on those as you leave. Instead of all the stresses or frustrations or challenges or rudeness that you experienced, focus on the gratitude. What are three things that you were grateful for that shift? And the last is fun. Take time to have fun. Even if it's just a little bit. Tell jokes to each other. Uh, play a game. Do things at home to have fun. It gives your mind a mental break. Recovery is important. You know that. That's what you're working on doing and helping others have recovery. Take time to have fun. Even have fun with your patients. It will make a big difference. 
So don't, don't be afraid of your emotions. Don't be afraid to feel them. In fact, if you work on numbing your emotions, you're actually not going to make them go away. It just creates more problems. Avoid substances. Don't numb through eating or shopping. That actually makes the problem worse. Feel your emotions. If you can feel them, you'll have the strength to be better, to have an increased capacity. I know this is a lot, and it can maybe even feel overwhelming. But find something to start with. Just one of these things. Find one little thing to start with. And don't think you have to do it all. It's just little bits. And I hope I hope this can really make a difference for you. You're wonderful people. Um, please comment below. Start a discussion. I'd love to help in any way I can. I, I will respond to comments. So this will be the first in a series of four videos. Please follow along. Please subscribe below so you can be kept up to date on these. I hope that helps.